This is uh, August the 18th, 1999. Kathy Flynn interviewing Eliseo Rodriguez and Paula Rodriguez, husband and wife, par excellence. For how many years, Paula? Almost 64 in October. 64 in October. Mm -hmm. Is she right, or Eliseo? Very close. <laughs> you only use it by one month. <laughs> um, we are in Santa Fe in your home, and it looks like it is chocked full of wonderful art that I'd like to know about. But we are going to focus today on the New Deal or WPA or federal art projects that you were involved in back in 1933. Yes. How old were you at that time? Do you remember? Yes, of course, at the time that we were, first of all, we started in working for the Federal Art Project around 1936. Uh, Paula and I were married in 1935. And uh, uh, I would say a few months after we were married, then I applied to see if I could get into the Federal Art Project. How did you hear about it? Well, uh, it, it was just something that, uh, very exciting. People were thinking of finding a job, you see, and since things were so hard, everybody was willing to go out and see what was going on, how you could get into a program, how you could work on, on certain fields. That nature is. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Where did you go to sign up? Well, first of all, it's quite a story because I was working uh, down on College, I used to call it College yes. Street. All right. Now, Old Pecos Trail, yes. right? Uh -huh. Yes, hi. And uh, that was the, the, the Old Pecos Trail, and they were renovating. Or they, there was a place called the uh, 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 Orchard Camp, and uh, so they decided they renovate the whole world, which happens to be uh, the um, desert in now. Okay. Well, since they gave me a job, I was just a young man or a year over training, uh, is digging uh, for sewer lines. But then after the job was completed, then they hired me to help with the cement uh, mixtures and whatever. All right. Then uh, after that, excuse me, Sorry, not a problem. We have a little visitor. He's about as big as a minute. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you later. Okay. See you. Thank you. See you. And then uh, what happened there was uh, uh, the job was completed, no more work. You see. So uh, I used to do little uh, little carvings, and I used to do little small glass paintings. For uh, as a matter of fact, they were used for tin work. And uh, there used to be the name of the store, uh, the native. The native market, yeah, right? A and uh, there was a lady, a very wonderful lady, by the name of Eleanor Vidal. She was the one that was in charge of the whole work. And she told me that morning that I went in. She said, "Lisa, I'm sorry, but um, we just can't buy anymore. People are not buying, and uh, we can't sell." So uh, what happened there was, uh, she said, "But I know of a certain person who is in charge of." Federal Art Project here in New Mexico, and he's seen your work, and perhaps he could, I'm sure that he would like to at least interview you. And so she gave me a piece of paper. I go over to the building, which happened to be at the very corner, right opposite from uh, the old um, uh, Cito Candelario, that was, uh, uh, you know which one that is. I uh, think so. Uh, 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 right next to Dendle's store. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, but it was the opposite, uh, right across the street. It's a two st there was a two-story building. So I went there and uh, I talked to him, and he said, well, the only way that we can get you into the federal art project is that you have to be on welfare. This is a program for people that really need it. And, and uh, I, I don't see any reason how that you could qualify with it, but you better have to go to talk to the other ladies and find out just what was going on. Who was that person? Was that just some clerk that was working, or was that Russell Vernon Hunter? That, that was Vernon Hunter that was talking to me. 
Okay. Then from there we went to I went to this courthouse or the county courthouse I guess, and uh, I talked to the ladies and uh, they weren't very friendly but they were willing to help out. You see. So finally uh, they gave me something to start. By that I mean uh, yeah, they uh, said, well here's a why would you call it Paula? That? But they gave me to get groceries. A coupon or something yeah, like something that. Like yeah. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a, a list of the things speaking. that we, we could buy. You see. Sure. Yeah, and uh, it was worth about five dollars. So I went to the store. No, I came home. Paul and I went down. We got a few items that we needed at home, and uh, then I proved by buying at the store with those tickets that they gave you, whatever, yeah. that you were entitled to go to work. So when I went back to Russell Vernon Hunter, and he was all excited, and he said, oh, I have a job for you. He said, we have the paint, we have the canvas, we have the watercolor, anything that you need. And so they furnished me with all the stuff that I needed, and I was in business. Hey. I remember I came, I came home, uh, and then the next day I was so anxious to see how I could get started. I don't know whether to start painting on a canvas or whether I should start what a car. Paul and I talked it over and she said, let's do a little bit at a time and find out just exactly how But the first painting that I did, I don't remember which one it was because I was working quite a few. Sure. And uh, so we used to turn them in into the main office. The office was right upset from El Dorado Hotel now, but it used to be the um, uh, Big Joe Lumber. I was going to say, that was Big Joe Lumber, oh, wasn't yes, it? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. the Big Joe Lumber. And the place where the offices were at were the, um, where the Hilton Hotel is now. Okay. All right, so uh, we used to turn in our work there about once or twice a week or maybe twice a month. It all depends how fast you were working. Or did you, you, when you turn it in, did you get paid by the number of pieces you did no. or did you get paid by the hour or what was it? You got paid by, <coughs> by the month. Okay. The, uh, our, our, our salary was 60 some or 70 some. 70, 76, 79, something like that. Something like that. Was, was that a lot? Well, it was well in comparison, <coughs> it, it, it was at least you could buy your groceries. And yeah. did you have children then? No. It was just about now, but then just. our first daughter was born in 1936. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, that's how we got involved deeply into the Federal Art Project. Do you know what happened to those things that you did first? Excuse me. No, I, I don't know. Just, I know a little bit about how the portfolio the silk screen. I don't know what happened to the mosaic work that we did for the uh, Tingley Hospital. The truth or consequence, I don't know what happened there. And uh, oh, there's so many things going on, and it's very exciting because uh, see, my life has been that I enjoy uh, experimenting with little. I didn't realize it until now how I would like to go in for little carving, I would like to go in for furniture, I would like to paint, I would uh, just... Uh, You're just in, very in, versatile. In, uh, just, just to try to see and uh, see how it would work out. Well, anyway, uh, the first program that came in was that, uh, that's where I met Louis Young. That was when we were working on the mosaic for the uh, uh, Tingley Hospital. What was the subject of the mosaic? Oh, it was if I ever find it, I want to know how I you found know, it. You know, it, it, it turned out to be very beautiful uh, ocean scene, bottom of the ocean scene, a lot of beautiful fish, you know. And, 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 and see what I mean? Uh, they were different colors of uh, different colors of, uh, of the fish, and then uh, the bluish. Uh, and we try to make it into streams like and it was it could have been about as big as this room here to about a 12 by 12 which well a huge thing, you know. as i recall our first conversation about it you thought it was to be done to be put on the fountain exactly yes. and the fountain is as big as certainly the base is as big as this room yes yes um 
I asked a former administrator if he knew about this, but he didn't. But I'm certainly inclined to, it is a veterans facility now, yes. and I'll bet they don't know anything about it. Um, I, I don't remember seeing it, and the earliest what, that I was involved was in the late 60s at Kerry Tingley. So, but someday we're going to find those. I think that the, <laughs> and all, and another thing, they were putting layers, you see. They were putting boxes in layers, and they were marked like one and one would go together, two and sure, two. Sure, sure. And just kept spreading around like that, you see. So that, that they were well, well organized as far as that goes. What they did with them, I don't know. Now, was that something that you and Louis Ewing worked on, just yes, the two exactly. of you, or was there anyone else involved? No, nobody else was involved. Okay, that's we good to know. Own, we made our own drawings, and we, we developed our own design as far as that. How did you fire them? Were they no, fired? They were already fired. All we had to do was just cut them. And okay. Them. It was just a regular jigsaw puzzle. You see. Okay. But okay. Except the, the tiles were small. If I remember correctly, it must have been about a an inch by an inch, you see, there was Oh, wow. And then we had to cut them. So if you try to make the fin of the fish, you would have to cut them real small. But you took a lot of them and you could... Right. And the beauty of the deal was that you could have different colors, you see. So uh, it was a lot of fun working on it. How long do you think you worked on it? Well, I think we worked over a year. It always took over a year to do things like that. And sure. Like, for example, on the silk screen in this net. We did a lot of silk screen for the uh, for the project. You see. Now, was and that the portfolio of Spanish colonial design? Th that was at the same time. Okay. Did you also work with him on the portfolio on the uh, Navajo rug collection? Yeah, exactly. I read the laboratory of anthropology, you know. and uh, then uh, let's see. That was uh, at the time that we were working on the portfolio, and. Uh, we used to walk at noon from here because Louis was living next door to my house. So we walk up together at noon and uh, back and for a little exercise purposes. And uh, so uh, I, I don't know that after the, that project, I did some painting in oil, I did some painting in watercolor. But everything was sort of in, interwoven, you know. I mean, it was in, the only thing that was a direct deal was the museum and the portfolio. You think of anything, Paula? No, and of course the, the, the paintings and glass paintings. Oh, yeah, we did mm -hmm. some glass paintings. For, for and, the and you did some, a big painting for, they went to Texas, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I also uh, was connected with uh, artists that were painting murals. That, that's prior to my mosaic business. Uh, I, I worked with Paul Lance uh, on murals that went to um, uh, Texas Centennial. Ah. For, for, for the so uh, I worked with him, and I also worked with Howard B. Sleater. They were both uh, working at the same time, doing murals for different places, I think. Slater was doing a, uh, one of those uh, programs where they were using New Mexico scene, like for example, Bear Mountain, you know, by which it's different than what we have in the really. <laughs> <laughs> And then another thing that uh, was, uh, at the time we were using the, the House of Representatives at the Capitol for the studio. Oh, they, really? They allowed, they allowed us to use that. Interesting. I was going to ask, where did you do the mosaic? Is that where you did no, it? No, the mosaic, we did it over at Louis Ewing's studio. Okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the murals that I was working with, Paul Lance and Howard Leader, were done at the Cap State Cap. Was and there ever anything done and put in the State Capitol that you know about? No. I Because I don't know about it. No. I, I have seen some references to paintings that may have gone there, but nobody knows what happened to them, so I don't know. Paul Lance has been a real mystery to me because I haven't been able to locate him, but I finally found someone that knew that he has since died. A man named John Jellico, who was up in, uh, lives up in uh, Littleton, Colorado, 
but he worked up in the Raton area. Yes. And he was a good friend of Paul Lance. And um, in fact, we interviewed him last, uh, a few months ago. And I asked him about various artists, and when I said Paul Lance, he said, oh, he's dead. And I said, finally I found out some. And he had a whole lot of material on Paul Lance that Paul had given him to write an article about, and he had never given it back to him. So he gave me all that material, and then I have given it to Paul's son, Chris, who had totally lost track of where his father was. He had no idea well, the anything time, about his dad. Last time that Paul and I talked to Paul and was, uh, he came over to the house. Yeah, he came over. And then from here, he told us that he was living up in Springer. Yeah. That's where he was, and that's where he had his studio, and that's where he'd been working. And he kept pretty quiet because uh, right after Juanita, that was his wife, right. passed away, he didn't feel too good. So uh, he was sort of all broken up and uh, uh, very seriously working, putting all his time just on his actual work. Well, now they were divorced early on, though, weren't yes, they? And then yes. she married a number of other times. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about uh, that particular deal, but I do know that. Uh, they were, uh, to be honest with you, I don't even remember that they were divorced, you see. Uh -huh. I don't really know. The yeah. one that I were talking about would be, uh, that I very well uh, acquainted with. Uh, she just passed away about a couple of months ago. Bernice. Bernice. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. Well, it was just a couple more, uh, no comparison, but I'm trying to say that uh, Bernice was a very hard working lady. She married several times. That yeah, I was kind yeah. of getting cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know, I, I don't think, well, I probably did ask Bernique, but she, she was probably not involved with, well, she wasn't involved with the WPA or Federal Art Project here. She yeah. wasn't here then, I don't know. Was she Bernique? No, no. no she was she came old. later. Yeah, I think like, she was born around 1921. Yeah. See, so. She would have been, yeah, too young, yeah. probably. Mm -hmm. um, while we're talking about marriages, help me out in terms of Virginia Hunter was married to Russell until um, his death, and then she married Louis Ewing, right? Yes. Now, right. the son that she has is from Russell, right? Yes. But she had no children from Louis. No. But Louis had children from a previous yeah. wife. Yeah, she's got is she still alive? Oh, yeah. Very I was alive, very, very sick active, of huh? yeah. I need to talk to her. I've never visited with her. Yeah, she's yeah. a nice person. Uh, she's got a son named uh, Mark and uh, Carl. Carl is, uh, Carl is the oldest. Do they live here in Santa Fe? Well, uh, Mark does, but uh, Carl lives somewhere in Arizona. Okay. Well, I will try to communicate with her sometime. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to try to get somebody who knew that. <laughs> she's, she's uh, mm -hmm. oh, you need to go to talk to her because uh, she's a very nice person. Was she and Louie married when you were working on this project? They, they, were, uh, they were married in 1935, 34. Was so they, they were, were, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Just a month before we Yeah, were, just a month before we got Aha, uh -huh. okay. And they, so, but this property next door and we bought these two rooms ourselves uh -huh. because we're just starting. So and we used to help each other. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I think back to the first years of my marriage and mm -hmm. there was a couple and we were very close and and we uh, did everything together and That's tried to figure out how to be parents together and <laughs> well, that, uh, uh, hung out the diapers on the line yes, together. Uh -huh. Well let me tell you something that was very exciting. It's the one time uh, Things were pretty rough, and uh, we were still waiting for our first check that was from the Federal Art Project. And uh, Mary came over, and she told Paula oh, that uh, it would be nice if we could fix something. You tell her the story, because you know more about well, it. Well, Mary came, and she said, we should fix something for lunch. I said, okay, we will, because we used to help them, you know, make with the adobes, whatever they were doing, they used to help us. And then <clears throat> I said, okay. And she said, I only have one egg, she said. And I said, well, okay, I can make egg patties out of the egg and uh, and uh, make uh, some red chili. 
and, and that's what we had for lunch too. And I made some tortillas, and but we were really getting hard by yes. getting by. Yeah. And and she only had one egg, as I said. <laughs> <laughs> so we managed to help each other, and then. Uh, uh, Mary and I used to, to do a lot of work for the Red Cross at the time too. We used to do a lot of sewing and that. We used to get together and and in fact Mary did a, a watercolor of me working on the oh. sewing machine and my two children later on, you know that was later, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, working on the sewing machine and doing things for the Red Cross. Uh -huh. Was, help me, was Odin Holland Kramer, the person in charge of the Red Cross, or was that later, or am I confusing that name? Uh, uh, no, you're right, but he, on a later date, he, okay. he, he came in uh, in the picture. He was with the WPA too, but yes. as far as yes. the Red Cross was a different story. As far as I know, I could be wrong, but... Uh, no, I just, I had that relationship there, and I was yeah. wondering what the time sequence was. Mm -hmm. Paula, were you involved in the Federal Art Project directly in any way? No, no, I wasn't, no. Now, I didn't start until Eliseo uh, was asked to revive the art, the drawing lane. When they asked all the, the artists if they wanted to, to try it and revive it, then Eliseo was the only one of the group that really, you know, stuck to it, no? And then after that, I, we, both of us used to work and I learned from that, you know, by trying, because we didn't know anything about what they were When you say they ask us, who is they? Who asked you to Where start? the WPA. They, okay. well, let me, they let did me, ask. Let me start it this okay. way. Uh, they were experimenting with different media, and they, uh, they would ask people if they would be willing to carve. Others, would you like to try something else? Well, they asked a few of the fellows, not only me, but all the people, whether or not they would like to try and see what they could do with the straw that they were, that was exciting. And, well, a few of us guys tried it, uh, well, I mean, uh, five or six fellows, but then they, they, they figured it was a little too tacky and messy, and they, were, you know, <laughs> well, they didn't think that it was... Tedious, you know, maybe. Uh, yeah, yes, and another, another thing, you wouldn't want, like, uh, uh, people that... Uh, were very much involved in their art. For example, uh, people that were always working with oils or temper or whatever, and they usually they wouldn't be very much interested in pulling around, scraping straw and stuff. But that's what it happens. That uh, eventually everybody went to the sidelines, and I feel well, I thought, well, I want to keep it going and see just what happens. And that's the way it's been going ever since. And Tell us. So we have the record. That's how you got started doing the straw inlay. Yes. Has it worked out for you? <laughs> Very beautiful. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, they have some of my work in one of the uh, uh, art museums in Berlin, Germany, and they also uh, were all over the country. You see. So the, it's done not only for me, but the family, and, and on top of that, for maybe 20 or more people that are working on them today, you see. So it, it was a complete disaster. <laughs> it started That's all right. It, it was something that has been a continuation as of now, today. So it was, it was something that you tried, and it has done pretty well for making you a living all these years. Yes, I would say that to a certain extent, yes, because like I say before I mentioned it, that I like to experiment with. Sure, yeah, right, right. right. And uh, making a hallway, building a house, doing some carving, uh, the whole work, you see. And uh, it's been an exciting life. See. The, only, and the only time after being, Paul and I have been married for 64 years, the only time that we haven't been together like now is uh, the time that I spend in the service, you see. So I was away for quite some time and what uh, what part of the service were you uh, in? I went up to the South Pacific. I I landed at the end in Okinawa, Japan, and uh, so uh, that's about the only time. Mm -hmm. How do you all? F I'm going to ask both of you this question. How do you get along working together? I can't work with my husband. Paula, how do you do it? Oh, I do. I do okay. 
I mean, we. I, if uh, there's anything I ask him, do you think this looks okay, or how do I work it? And he'll tell me, you know. Or if he's trained on a design, he asks me, you know, what do you think about this design? Do you think it goes this way or that? That's the way we work it out. And then I tell her, don't you dare copy my design. <laughs> 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 are your are your designs all biblically based or religious based, or do you do you know, other things? Uh, uh, I started just working with floral designs. I think it seems to be traditional way from way, maybe in the 15th, 16th century. See what happened was, according to we boys, she used to come here and we talked a lot about it. She told me that uh, what little. History you could find uh, that the um, basic for the uh, uh, straw was practiced in Africa, you see, really? by the Pionis in Africa. And then the Moors introduced it into Spain. And then from Spain, gradually it came into uh, along the Rio Grande when the priests came over, you see. That, so that means that uh, this has been a real continuation right along. And it stopped for a while after the WPA uh, as far as being introduced as an art idea. Maybe it's not an art yet, but we're having a lot of fun working on it. Well, and it's been pretty lucrative, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it is definitely an art. How many members of your family are involved in it? We have uh, two of my two, two girls and two boys, and then my daughter and Jane. We're nine. Nine all together. Because I, uh, I had to to write to this lady that uh, purchased us with uh, with strong, and I said uh, that nine of our family are doing the work. I counted it before I told her. <laughs> <laughs> had to keep. Now, does everybody work out of their house? No, no. In no. fact, my my daughter, well, Vicky is a teacher. She is teaching you, know, and. Uh, and uh, Yolanda and her husband are both retired. She was a registered nurse and she's retired. And they do work, uh, some of this work. And then also the grandchildren, there's uh, four or five of them that are doing the work too. Mm -hmm. There was, uh, there's Monica and Jessica and Gabriel and Marcial. They're my neighbors right here, my grandson. Uh -huh. Marcial was just here. Yes, yes. 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 Working, uh, oh, he's working one of the did you see the cross that working on? No, but... I'll show it to Now, you. who did the big cross in the state capitol building? I did. Okay, oh, I did. that's what I was thinking was yours. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is so beautiful. I was there yesterday, and there was a woman looking at it and mm -hmm. said, this is so beautiful. I can't believe anybody can do that. <laughs> I'm sure that is the response that, that, that you get all the time. Mm -hmm. Nice. Tell us more about the portfolios. Well, both of the portfolios. How did they? How did you get involved? How? What did you do? Well, to start with, I don't know who was uh, behind the program, except that the uh, personnel at the um, uh, Indian uh, Laboratory of uh, Anthropology. Of anthropology. And from there, how they got connected with doing it, I don't know. But one thing we they called that they wanted us to go down that they had arranged a place down the cellar where we could use it for a studio so we could do work. And that's how it happened that uh, we kept it going. We kept it going for over two years, or maybe no. Maybe I'm exaggerating, I don't remember. Well, that. It was a long time. And what they did, they selected the best pieces, the best blankets, or the best uh, in design so that they could put in performance. And I don't remember how many of them were there. It could have been 12 different, I don't know, kinds. Yeah. It's such well, a long time. I believe there were 52 renderings per portfolio. Possibly. And then they did about 200 portfolios, something like that. Um, did you get did you get a whole lot of the different 52, or would you just do all of number six or something? I mean, I'm saying, did you do, did you paint all different kinds of renderings or subjects, yes. or did you just have one that you did a lot of? Well, for example, we're going to do this blanket and see we were going to make a hundred of them. 
Uh -huh. 100 princes. That we put to one side, we started another one. That's more or less the way it worked. I don't remember that they were stopping to do something else, no. Okay, when I was just giving those figures, that was on the Spanish colonial design. I know almost nothing about the Navajo blanket one. Can you tell me how, were those, did you do everything at the laboratory? Did they run the print, the, uh, no, you the, see what they their did, lithographs, like, weren't they, or silk screens, you said? They were silk screens. What happened was, what we did, we took one of the blankets, okay, say four feet by two feet or something like that. We, we draw it to scale. And we reduce it down to where it would be a print in, in, in a portfolio, you see. Right. And then from there, we made the colors a right measurement, as close as it could be yeah, for yeah. each one of them. When we g did get all that work going, that's when we started reproducing. So we put the black first, and then the brown, or whatever. And then they, that's the way we build it up until we finish this item. When we had that completed, then we started another one. But we had to change the, what they called it. The, it was uh, some kind of a film that we put on the silk. Because first of all, we made a frame. The, on, on the frame, we tacked the silk. On the silk, we um, we cut the design on the, on material. It was called uh, I don't remember the name of the material, but it was an adherent uh, uh, method that we could melt a little bit of here and there, powerful stuff. And that's what we did until, it was quite a process, you see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then we had what they call the squeegee. Yeah. That was just to put this. Yeah, I remember doing became it. became very good at that. <laughs> and uh, so that was more or less the general idea on the silk screen. Like by the same token we used uh, on the mosaic, how we cut it with the pliers and then we, we sent them down with Grind them right, not sand, but grind them with uh, an electric uh, uh, grinder. You see, so everything worked out pretty good. Uh, and what I'm, to me, very honestly, uh, you, uh, I think I've done more working for the Federal Art Project, the WPA, than, than if I would have gone to college. You see, because I had all the advantages. In other words, people had the advantage of building themselves up if they wanted to try something. They gave you all the possibilities to, to be able to work on it. Like I told a, a lady that came in from the, I don't know whether it was the New York Times or somebody, and uh, she, uh, and she, uh, I told her, but she asked me about President Roosevelt. And I said, well, first of all, we got to thank God. Second, President Roosevelt came as a father to our nation. Mm -hmm. And a father is not going to let his children starve to death. And uh, so that's what he was giving us. He wasn't, he wasn't a handout. We were working for something. We were learning and building our country, see, which a lot of people don't realize that. Yes, but yes. To me, dog, because it was a good solar foundation. I haven't been a rich man, but I have made a decent living at it. So what I learned, and a lot of the people had the same possibility, but a lot of them didn't want to didn't do it. Uh -huh. If I want to be an artist, I'm just going to paint black and white, and that's going to be <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah. and for me, it was a different story. So I remember Virginia saying that there was some real feelings back then about having to sign up to be on relief and so there were some there was some uh kind of strong dichotomy or division between the ones that were willing to go ahead and do that because they wanted to feed their families sure, exactly. and the ones that said no i'm not they had too much pride or something or they had another source of money no i i, I doubt it very much i think that in that case for that matter it seems to me that whether you have, were proud or not proud, you were hungry, you could attack <laughs> right? it. <laughs> and, that, and that's what really happened. I know for a fact a lot of the wood painters prior to, let's say, the Depression started, say, around 33, supposedly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But from 15 to 33, that's quite a few years, maybe 10 years or whatever. 
and during that time I could see how people were very progressive from the time 1920, 20, up to 27, people driving nice cars, and, but all of a sudden it changed. Yes, yeah. yes. And the people that were very well uh, uh, adjusted to the uh, beautiful things of life, materialistic deal, they started going down, see, gradually, gradually, see. And uh, that's where the, the conflict came in, seems to me by virtue of uh, having to go through the welfare department and ask for help, you see. Yeah. And a lot of them people didn't like that, but they yeah. had to. They wanted had to, to sure. See. And that's how a lot of those artists in the group, uh, oh, they even hated to be called uh, to do certain uh, portfolio type for me, you see. Yeah. What they did, you see, they made a plate, maybe two or three hundred of them, and then they divided, say, so they gave you this is spring, you take 10, she takes 10, I take 10, uh, all over. Right, uh, right. And then they have to color them by the, by the original one made by e boy. Yeah. And then yeah. from there, so that, uh, so it was, it was a lot of fun, too. Yeah. Because it was what we used to have fun in, in, in regard to, to uh, enjoy what you were doing. For example, talking to uh, Alfred and uh, Dorothy Moran. They used to have their regular weekly parties on Saturday night. Yeah, I can understand those were pretty good parties. They were nice parties, and people would take, Paolo would pick some pot of beans, so somebody else, Mary will pick some spaghetti, and down the line, and uh, I, maybe I take a bottle of wine, somebody else takes something else. And um, they had easels in the room, like this room here. They used to live right at the corner of uh, uh, Sequia Madre. Camino Poliente, somewhere around there. And uh, so that was more or less a, a, a Saturday evening uh, entertainment. And uh, people would be drawing, other people would be talking about literature, other people, very exciting. The yeah. Dorothy would be playing the piano, while Alfred played the violin, mm -hmm. and it was nice, very nice. And that's where you got to meet all the other fellows, you see. Sure. So there was Wyatt Davis, and. Uh, Hal West and uh, uh, Jim Morris and uh, uh, oh I don't remember how many uh, Jim Morris and uh, the other guy that used to do some silk screen later on Chuck Barrows and uh, he was the mushroom man right yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then another one that was there uh, very exciting to talk to was uh, Olive Rush. She was a nice lady they liked to talk about. Her. Another one that I met, not that she was connected, I don't know whether she was connected or not, but once in a while I talked to Olive, uh, to uh, O'Keefe, Georgia O'Keefe, see. And, uh, now she so never got to be on the WPA, no, as I, I think so, No, not that I know, but she used to visit some of these guys, you see, by accident. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I met her, uh, the first time that I met her was at the American Research Garcia Street, and uh, she talked to me and she said that she really liked my work, that uh, it was just a matter of more practice, more practice, keep going good, and uh, there were people like that that were willing to help out, and so. Well, so speaking of the um, School of American Research, that brings up Amelia White, yes. is that right? Yes. She was quite a benefactor around here, right, at the well, time? Was, uh, or was that at that time, or was it a yeah, different time? I think it was just a little prior to that. I, I okay. think that uh, when she was uh, all out to helping out and building a lot of things that were exciting to this part of the country, I think that the same way with the uh, people that are running now, La Golondrina. Yes. Uh, the pa Paula Hymos? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Well, the, the Mrs. White was the head lady of the whole works there. And she's the one that was running the uh, Native Market. market. Yeah. I that thought the Native Market originally, I, I had it confused, I thought it was part of the WPA, but it was really no, no. before. I mean, it was, it was separate. Yeah. Yeah. Private. I have read some books about it since then. Um, did you ever feel that there was any prejudice involved in terms of, was there discrimination between the so the Anglo and the Hispanic and the Native American people getting on the program? No, 
I doubt it very much because it's the first place in the, uh, maybe in other programs, I don't know. But uh, I'm talking about the art project. Mm -hmm. the, 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 it was a matter of being all connected together and going to the same rock and tumble deal. That there was no time to, that I'm better than you. It was just a matter of how good we can do the work to produce it. You see. And I think that was very, very nice. Because uh, uh, in that group, there, first of all, you can see that there were very, very few Spanish people involved in the art project. But there were other people involved in the building trades or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I don't know. No, I don't it's just think. been really hard. I, I really appreciate what Tay Nunn has done to find more of the Hispanic yeah. artists that were involved. Yeah, because she, uh, as a matter of fact, she said that uh, she went to Washington, D.C., and she checked, and she found out that my name was uh, in the uh, Library of Congress, you see. But very, very little of what I've done compared to what other people have done. Yes. That's what was getting her. Right. See, if, if Louis and Ewing and I, for example, if Louis and, uh, Ewing and I were working in the same program, they probably mentioned I was cleaning the brushes, but Louis was doing all the work. Exactly. And, and, exactly. And, uh, so she didn't like that, and I think that's working out. It turned out to be just for the best of everything. Yeah. I didn't say that I was just washing brushes. No, I mean that I was doing that. I'm saying I'm putting as an example. See. Right. I oh, I, I understand. Yeah. Because a similar thing happened, I think, over in terms of the mural in Fort Sumner that Hunter did. Uh -huh. Hunter, for the most part, got all the credit for it. Whereas Pedro Cervantes I, I, probably did as much as as Hunter, but I don't know that for a fact. You see, that's what's hard because, uh, but uh, there they would say and helper, and, but they serious. wouldn't identify who the helper was. Uh, exactly, uh, that, yeah. that was more or less the rating that you would get. You know. Yeah. But there was one lady that came in from Washington D.C. at the time, and she mentioned something in that respect, not not directly about prejudice or anything like that, but she mentioned the fact that uh, the type of work that we were doing, she mentioned uh, Pedro Cervantes, I believe, and Patrocino Arena, yeah. and she mentioned me uh, in the Washington Times or whatever, you see. And, uh, but you see, they were actually keeping things uh, more or less uh, elevated to a point where things were working out. If they could just keep it smooth, Everything was working out fine, but uh, no. So no I, controversy. No, I don't, no, no, I don't think that there's anything in those days. No, everybody, oh, no. everybody was. <laughs> and but everybody was getting fads or getting a check. So course, you know, as long as you were getting a check, was, and and there probably weren't people that were being very activists like we have today. I mean, uh, yeah, well, it's a lot of different stories. Oh because yeah. I'll tell you, like, for example, my grandchildren. You see, Papa, all the good job, you know, the professors, they, they earn good money and they live a very wonderful. So those people don't know what it is to be on the street. Yes. See, they, they, yes. They're enjoying life. To, like, for example, today, my granddaughter, Jessica, I just went down, to, she's going to start college at uh, Peppermint. Pepperdine. Pepperdine, yeah. In, in California, so she goes back there now. Oh, that's nice. like that. Yeah. That was not something that would have been possible. Oh, no, it was no. just. We could do very quick. We went down to the Garcia Street School. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, Paula, what kinds of memories do you have of uh, your husband and the people that you remember from that time working during that period? Well, the, as I said, we used to, what we used to do, uh, Louis and Mary and Elsie and I, we used to go out camping on weekends and they used to do paintings for the WPA and, uh, and that's how I started with the strong. I used to practice on that. And Mary and Louis and Michelle, all three of them did it, watercolors, whatever, oil paints, out in the in the on the mountains where we went. We used to have a lot of fun. We used to get together and work on things like that. Uh, I used to do whatever. I did a lot of sewing, knitting, whatever. 
and they used to paint. I used to pose for them for their paintings and things like that. That reminds me, what was the name, or, and is she still alive, uh, Monica's sister that used to pose for painting. She's older than Monica. Well, you see, uh, ah. very old at the time. I'm not sure she's still no. alive. I no, haven't no, seen no. her around. She died, you know, the, the one that used to come here. What was her name? Um, no, she doesn't. she's still alive there taking care of her No, right but now. that's not her. I should ask yeah, Monica. Let me, let, me, let me mention her name. It's, uh, what's her name? Well, I just remember that it was alluded to the fact that she would, she might even do nude modeling, and that was really something. Her? Yeah. She wanted you to, to do. Yeah, but that's not her. This one is still alive, and they're taking But the her. one that used but to. But this one was the, the main one, the one we're talking about now. Oh, uh -huh. What's her name? The one that that uh, that came here, and she wanted you to paint her. Remember? That, that's Florence. Right. Oh, yeah, well, that's not, she's mm -hmm. not talking about Florence. Oh. She's talking about the oldest one. Oh, the oldest yeah. one? Yes. Yeah. Well, I think she was one of the oldest yeah. ones. Then it was... Uh, Somebody... Uh, it's a real character, as I recall. Eloy and... Uh, so yeah, Eloy and... Uh, they're taking her care, taking care of her now. Yeah. Did, did oh, there... Yes. Were there classes that uh, or did you all oh and I know another question did Louis Ewing you you've mentioned that he did paintings I did he do anything besides silk screening he did oh he did landscaping and uh, beautiful work oh, he did good art very good mm -hmm. um, okay. what about some of you we've talked you mentioned Paul Lance Chuck Barrows you all live right in the spot, right in the middle of where all these people lived. I mean, it was all exactly. around. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and, uh, and just like you sitting here and me sitting here, we talked about it, and uh, it was just a very exciting thing going on. You see. In other words, to me, I hate to say this, but a little disaster sometimes will get people together. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Because the reason I say it because uh, take for example my case in the army. Uh, in my army, I was the only Spanish surname, as far as I in my company. Uh -huh. But they, we were all so involved with what was going on. Who cared what I was? You see, it sure, didn't matter. Sure. It was just beautiful. That it, by the same token, we're talking about uh, uh, like today. Uh, how or in the days when we talked about uh, different things, how close people were together. So you, you, you mentioned something about, uh, for example, uh, we met Primontel, Joseph Bacos, and uh, uh, Schuster, and all those guys. We all used to get together, and uh, we had lunch together. They used to give... Do a little drink. drinking together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, why not that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pop Chalice said to me, it was a tough time, but there was a lot of loving going on. Yes, that's what I'm trying true. to say. Yes, uh -huh. we used to yeah. get along with everybody. It was so very nice and got together now and then. You know, prior uh, to you, remember, uh, you probably heard about uh, Caluzzi. No, tell me. Howard Caluzzi. No, he he used to live next door to, and he was he used to do the. He used to hey, I'm getting fresco. to be terrible. I can't fresco. remember names or anything. He used to do frescoes. In fact, he did the one at the Borali, you know that one? And he was very, very, very good friend of ours, but very... very well, I think he was the first bohemian artist that came into Santa Fe. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. so true, yes. yes. Well, now, was he on the WPA? I've never heard no, of him. No, I was no, going to no, say, no, I know. No, okay. No, no. Okay. He had a lot of money. He did. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, but he was one of the most wonderful persons. People didn't like him, first of all, because they, he was such a different character. And uh, the reason for it was because he used to go to Harvard University, and he had a girlfriend. That's the story that he told me. <laughs> and he said uh, one time he was so broken up because they couldn't get along together anymore, so he just tried to commit suicide. See? So he jumped the bridge, Colucidi, 
and from there on his uh, memory started working differently. But he had a very wealthy family and they were the ones that were keeping, keeping him here. So he was a remittance man. Yes. Well, that, my husband says there were a lot of remittance men in Santa Fe. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, he, uh, he was a good cook. He used to have all kinds of... But very funny, though, because you'd be surprised he used to cook some nice... Uh, you tell about the soup that he cooked in every winter time. Yeah. yeah, he used to make real good soup and everything, but he was... Well, for the way he lived, he was pretty bad. <laughs> so he didn't want to eat the soup? You know what he used to do? He had one of those beautiful stoves. You know, the old the, ones. Uh, and uh, right in front of the stove, you could hang your, your towels. Or so he, had, he used to hang his socks right in front there. <laughs> so uh, when he was cooking, he, he used one of his socks to open and bring out the oven. The and the pool, the pool. The, and uh, Deals like that, so uh, when it's time for lunch or dinner, whatever it was, he take both of the socks and put them in there. <laughs> and uh, so that kind of changed people's attitude or eating for that particular day. <laughs> <laughs> when he had the parties, we a lot of us would be there, but he, we didn't like the yeah. idea. But anyway, he was nice. He was a nice oh, person. Oh, he was a nice person, yeah. very nice. He used to get along very much. And the funny part about, it, about him was that he used to come here all the time. He, every every morning, no? He used to buy, and he would look, maybe he would look at a painting or something, and he wouldn't face us. He would talk and talk and talk, but he wouldn't face us. He was always looking at something. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, he, was pretty, a, he was... He was a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. he, um, he was very well acquainted with, uh, very close to Father, he went up to the Cristo Rey Church, Craig, Father, Father, Father Craig, Craig, Father yeah. Craig, and they were very close friends, and they used to have lunch or dinner together, whatever, and uh, very, very close. So when Colucci was looking out the window one day, uh, sitting uh, the sun was coming, in, the, uh, the cat jumped from the window sill and grabbed onto his leg, you see, and uh, he. he Daughters were not too up to date, so the, the, the cats crashed him, and he developed blood poisoning. Uh -huh. And right away, in a matter of days, so he passed away. Huh? Oh he developed so much that it was rough. When, uh, when about this time, what, what year do you think this was? Could have been 1930, let's see, 40. Could have been 1940. Mm. The Cristo Rey Church was built in 41. 40. So he must have been between 41 and 50. Yeah, or, yeah. So, uh, so there was another nice fellow that we knew. We and he became a Catholic at the last minute when he uh -huh. was dying. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, was so, so when you come to, to the point of the people that we knew, we knew Paul West, we knew Jim Morris, and the, the whole gang. Huh? Tell me about Jim Morris, because I haven't been able to find a whole lot about him. Well, Jim Morris, for one thing, was uh, came in from uh, New York, I believe. I don't remember exactly what he told me, but uh, him and, and uh, his was it Jeff? Jeff? Was it Jeff? Jeff? Bauer, sure, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, they were they, the they both came together, and uh, they uh, they wanted to paint, and they started painting here, and but. Financially, everybody was behind schedule. Yeah, <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything was kind of a rough look. So they managed to get right at the corner of Camino de Lora and coming to Canyon Road. There's a long building there that used to be, be the schoolhouse. Well, somehow Jim and um, and. Uh, <laughs> I, I keep forgetting his name, his friend. Chuck Barras. Chuck Barras. They got together and they talked to the owner of the place so that they could live there and keep it, to keep it going. And that's how they, they started painting that nice place to work. And uh, that's how they they were living right there. Uh -huh. And uh, they loved to paint. Especially Chuck Barras used to paint a lot of uh, still lifes. Oranges and lemons and that kind of thing. Yeah, right. Was there, 
Did you experience much communication between the artist in Taos and the t artist in Santa Fe? Or was it pretty, I mean, of course, transportation wasn't that, I mean, it was difficult. Me, it was a completely different, uh, yeah. uh, I think it was two different uh, classes there. Yeah. Uh, Taos and, uh, I don't mean financial, but it was just uh, different in distance. Yeah, sure. Didn't know much about what they were doing and vice versa. Yeah. For example, Dan Avery and a lot of people there, Sharp and all. We heard of them, but we were reading through the paper, never met them. Yeah. Things like that. Hi. Do you know where, you, you've mentioned some of the things, but uh, do you know where um, some of your work went? Do you, have you ever been able to, and I know another, one other question I want to ask you is, you haven't mentioned, uh, you haven't talked much about your painting on glass. Yes. How, that's another one of those things you did. Uh, did you do any of that for the WPA? Yeah, well, one of, one of the, um, one of the castings that I did for the WPA got me a prize at the state. Yeah. Uh, it, it was sent in to Vernon Hunter and his company, and I did get the prize for the glass painting. Now, what happened to the glass paintings that I did while in the, I don't know, yes. with the exception of one that went to uh, the Palace of the Governors, and they're showing it right now at the Folk Art Museum. At the uh, yeah. uh, Nombre show. Sin Nombre, yes, yes. exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, what about um, the work that, the tin work that, um, Eddie uh, Delgado. Yes, yes, I was, I was trying to come up with his name. Yeah, well, Eddie Delgado, as far as I know, very honestly, was the only one that was doing work for the WPA with teamwork mm -hmm. at the time. Okay. I, I don't remember of any other people doing it because I used to do the little glass painting for Eddie. Okay. To, to, to do his solder and all that. Did you but, go to Clovis with him and do any work in, at the Canyon Air Force Base? Yes. I, 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 that was in, uh, let's see, you know, I, sp I spent there about four or five months, but it wasn't for the WPA, though. Okay. That was after the, after. as far as I know, it was after. They selected about five or six persons to go down and work there. There was uh, Henry Brito, uh, David Lamley, uh, myself, Eddie Delgado, and Saturnino Hernandez. Leo Martinez from Taos. It must have been about seven of us guys. And you were building furniture and yeah, exactly. doing tin work yeah. for the for the uh, officers club. Yeah, exactly. You got it. We uh, Eddie Delgado was uh, doing the uh, chandeliers, and you might not believe it. They were about six or seven. seven oh, feet. I've seen pictures of them. They were beautiful, but they yeah. were big. So they had to use a crane to put them up there. <laughs> Uh -huh. They were big, you know, and uh, he used to use the ladder to uh, to be able to solder. Things. You see, that's another thing that came to my mind now. Whenever they needed any little help like that, I was willing to go and help them so that I could learn. So I helped him do the soldering on that particular. Has Angie showed you the pictures that I shared with her about that? No. You'll love it. There is a picture of him working um, on some cabinets, so, you know, and um, there is a picture of, probably you are in the picture, I don't know, we'll have to find out from Angie, or she was going to show it to you. I found it in the archives of the Cannon Air Force Base, and under the picture, someone has written, uh, Captain so-and-so, and get this, and some Iranian cabinet makers. Uh -uh. And it was yeah. Delgado and probably these men that you were just mentioning. Did you know you were Iranian? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> kind of nice to know now. <laughs> but you see how things have changed. That's another thing that we really enjoyed it because that's when we started making fairly good money at the time that we went to, to uh, Kirtland. No, no. Canada. Yeah, Canada. Yeah, Canada. Canada. And uh, we went to the bank one time. 
horrible guy. And the uh, first guy went in and they showed him. And uh, he said, gee, my God, what you guys doing? Building planes or what? <laughs> and uh, so making a lot of money here. And this guy didn't ask for the other. And again, the other next one, gee, my gosh, you guys. <laughs> and then he said, oh, what are you doing there anyway? He said, do you know what? This guy told me. I refuse to answer. This is a, a military secret. I can tell you nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was very good. No more did they ask questions. Do you remember how much money? I mean, you're talking about how it was a lot. Do you remember? Well, yes, uh, the, probably in those days, for example, you could put as many hours as you want to during the day. And maybe you were making about 250 an hour, you see. So by the end of the month, you would have been the thousand for one month. Wow. Now, I'll be lying because I don't remember. Yeah. But they were good, good money. Do you remember that time? Yes, I remember. You it felt yeah, like you hit a jackpot? Oh, oh, it was really something. <laughs> <laughs> very very <laughs> saving and saving for what we needed. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. $80-some dollars. $78 a month. Then you jump into something big like that. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't so much the money that you were getting by the hour, but the long hours that you put in there. Sure. Not only that, but you see, they allowed you to work like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That was your double time. If you want to work Sunday, go work. And so you, and if you work nights, you could put your 40 hour or whatever. Yes. And then soon as and then you just keep on fighting. Yeah. And yeah. they had the secretary going pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but that was all, you think, federal government yes. via the, the airways? As far as I know, that was a complete, a complete different setup. But I had nothing to do with it, though. So it probably was in the middle to late 40s, you think? Because... No, the, uh, to me it must have been right at the beginning of the, of the 40, let's see, 42, 42. Okay. Because then uh, they came the army, see, so... Yeah, then, so yeah, yeah, then you would have gone into the... Uh, yeah, right, so of course it would have been, yeah. So you figure out that it must have been from... All these things happened from 41 back up to 35, I Okay. Well, we consider the the dates thirty three to forty three, mm -hmm. knowing that the the war started in forty two, mm -hmm. and then they just kind of started shutting things down. They had some graphic and poster things that they did for the army yes. or for the war, but after that, it was kind of like all over, and everybody went into the military. Yeah, yeah. All those CCC guys, the WPA guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you mentioned when we first started that you worked down by the Desert Inn. The the river park, the Santa Fe River Park, Yes. was that a WPA or a CCC project? It and you worked on that? A combination. Combination. Yeah, because there were people there working with big rocks and carving them and you know, shaping them, whatever. There was a beautiful thing going on, you know, so many people working and everybody seemed to be enjoying it because. You see, they told you, we want you to build something here, wherever it was. Supposing I come and say, you build me something here that would be pretty. You just start working and <laughs> enjoy it. See, I think that was the enjoyment of the whole deal. Very seriously, good work, but still with a lot of feeling. I think that's what makes a difference. So, uh, in feeling, I mean something that the person that was working on was enjoying. By the same token, the people that were accepting the work, you see. So and you were appreciating the chance to get to work. Exactly, you see. That's, that's why I feel that there's a lot of people who wouldn't even think about the WPA or the World Public Administration. It's because uh, they didn't want to learn something that would be very beneficial to them or to the country for that matter, because everything that was being built, there's some fences right now and uh, water retainers over in the oil, they're still holding on pretty good. Oh, <laughs> any time the subject comes up, almost invariably somebody says, well, there's a rock wall over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I think we uh, have pretty well covered this. If there's anything else, Paula, do you think? And Sally, is there anything that you'd like to ask? Sally is the person who's been videotaping. Uh, if you have had something that's hit you during our discussion. No, no, I think it's...
Everything is there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you certainly wrapped it up beautifully. I, uh, we hope to make this into a documentary someday, mm -hmm. and I just feel like what you said here has got to be the ending of it because it's really, you're really well, saying it. Very honestly, like I told you when we started, uh, I would try to do my best to answer to the best of my ability, so did Paula, because at our age, you see, I'll be in 84 next month. And there's so many things that I even I forget, you know, mm -hmm. or find my shoe. I leave my shoe <laughs> over here, and I look all over for it. Very honestly, it happens like that because you all, you think fast, but still it doesn't register. Well, and and that was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but obviously. For you, it was a very good time. Very good uh, time. And you all... We were young and we enjoyed everything. Even if we didn't have any anything special or anything extra, we used to enjoy it very much. Right, mm -hmm. right. Sometimes I feel like we need to be back with that oh, to well, really appreciate life. That, that's, that's when you really right. appreciate life. When you yeah. go and go into a restaurant mm -hmm. and uh, enjoy your meal because you save for that meal. Sure, sure. But now it doesn't matter. You say, well, okay, well, let's go out and have something to eat. Yeah. In those days, you, you had to stop me from, <laughs> from Sunday to Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I remember on Sundays we ate a lot of waffles at night because there wasn't anything else. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. thank you very much for helping us to uh, document the things that happened in New Mexico. And uh, if you think of something else, give me a call and we'll, <laughs> we'll yeah, write it. We're really more than glad to help yeah. out because it would be kind of nice to keep a complete record of it. One thing I forgot to say that uh, prior to, after all this thing happened, I went to work for Southwestern Master Craftsman. I became their, uh, their first uh, uh, person to decorate furniture that went to Marshall's Fields and uh, places like that. And then I uh, also did work for the Santa Fe Studios of Church Art, and all through the background of the WPA. See. Uh, like I said, I used to experiment with a lot of things. And so working for the churches, I learned how to do carving. So I would go into churches, like for example, up in Colorado Springs, there's a place called uh, uh, St. Francis on the Mount. And, and it's the cylinder church, you see, and I did all the work with would work for them inside. Then in Santa Barbara, California, I did a lot of work for them, a lot of carvings of the new additions that they made for potential priests. That's at the old mission. And then St. Brendan's, that's at the corner of 3rd and Western, going into Hollywood. Uh, that's another big church for uh, the parishioners like uh, Bing Crosby and Red Ion and all those people were uh, the members of the parish. And then uh, I did murals for a church in Castro Valley that developed into eight years' work, from two years' research work to eight years, six years of. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, about six years. Well, you did the painting. So you can see that I, there was a great deal. That's why I said I was a college. You learn to do, and, and traveling to those places to do jobs and stuff. But it was very exciting. And I, I failed to ask you if you did any murals, but you have now indicated. So, is there any part of or any medium of art that you haven't tried? Yes. No, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, but how about big sculpting? That I haven't. But the small culture, yes, and feels like that. You know. it's, it's very exciting to, that's why I feel so bad. You should have my arms are oh, you know, yes, yes. all the items that they were at, or at the veteran hospital. And uh, I feel weak now. I, I feel weak because, uh, first of all, my health has been keep holding me down. And then uh, my desire to, to be able to produce. Is another. So you're frustrated. Yeah, exactly. Looking out the window, and uh, and when I could be working out in my garden, which I love to do that, and uh, oh, there's so many things going on, and 
I tell that I feel kind of bad because after I've been sick, I've been so weak. <laughs> he can't. He's uh -huh. been very sick. And Paula, she's been, uh, not, not because she's sitting beside me now. Oh, 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 oh. Let's make sure we get this recorded. There, there was one time that I told Paula, well, this is it. As far as me being an artist, doing a painting and everything, I like, quit. I don't want to. Who gets this going for? I don't know what. And then Paula said, no, you're not going to do that. And, uh, well, since we're a married couple, we don't have arguments. We don't have to argue about anything. Oh. So there we started. You see, you do, you don't. You know, <laughs> and before I knew it, well, the next day I had a brand new paint box with all the colors. Well, but first he did th throw away his paint box. Everything oh. he threw away. I'm not an artist and I'm not going to bother with that anymore. And I said, no, you're not. You're going to keep on and keep on. And then after a while, I went and bought him some paint and bought him so he could continue. He had to start he over. He had to because it was a crime for him to just, you know, you give can, up. You know, he, he wasn't, he wasn't doing Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, all, as a human being, we all go to those. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. So it's kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, the same deal with uh, the, you seen that big crowd that I did for the Oak Art Museum. Yes. The straw. Oh. Well, uh, I was thinking about that cross early one morning, around three, four o'clock in the morning. So I've been working with decorations of uh, uh, floral designs and all that. Kind of, and I said, well, if I could only break out different pieces. Well, that was the first one that I made. The next one went to New York. And then the third one, the same size, you know, the one that's, that went to uh, Colorado. What's the name of the museum in Colorado? Colorado uh, Taylor, Springs, Taylor, Dave Turner. Taylor, Taylor. I was there recently. Beautiful building. Yeah, Wonderful. Well, well, they have one of my big crosses there, too. So it, it started developing to something. Now that I'm a real old man, and with all the weakness of life, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I could do a lot of work now. But, uh, I mean, I could produce a lot of that work that people have been asking me to do. From glass painting, stained glass window, you name it, huh? But you've done a lot. God's been good to you, and you have taken that talent that He has given you and done one heck of a lot with it. That's beautiful. I, I enjoyed that. The, the, um, when you get in a, in, a, in, in a spot where it's frustrating, my. Uh, interpretation of that would be that uh, try to uh, tackle it, if you go into it and see what happens. Like for example, uh, there are times when we were, Paul and I were making adobe uh, to build, you see. And uh, there are times where, oh, I don't know whether we should come. Why are we doing this thing here like that? And, and we were enjoying it, you see. That all you do is you see a little square with mud and, and work on it and pull out square and again you start again and you keep on going. So no meaning because absolutely where is this leading us to? But then after they're made and they're dry and then you start putting a corner on your building and then start that's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's when we were building that fireplace there. Uh, the and I it was cold, very cold water. It was sometime in November. And uh, it, it was kind of a rough day, uh, and Pablo was wearing coveralls, and she was all wrapped up, and, and then I was having problem with, couldn't get the thing going. And then I turned around and said, Pablo, he said, what? what? What's going on? I said, you, you know that if you were working for a contractor, he'll fire you right now. And she said, why? Well, you're not doing anything. I was blaming her for not doing anything. It was cold, and we were building that room. And we didn't have any windows yet, so oh. but they opened. It was in November. Oh. And, oh. and it was cold, cold. And I had my hands in my pockets, waiting for him to see what we were doing with the fireplace. 
He was mad because I was standing there looking. <laughs> I'm very glad to know that you are a typical couple. <laughs> that <laughs> statement you made that you didn't argue. Oh, my no, goodness. No, that's far from it. We always, boy, <laughs> we always contradict thing. each other. <laughs> this young woman here has just been married a short time, so oh, she'll boy. have to learn. <laughs> you know, uh, there, there was, uh, they had uh, over at the cathedral uh, a mission. A Mexican priest came from Mexico to deliver the sermons at the cathedral. And in that program, uh, that particular sermon was just for men. And I remember I was there, I was just a young man, he must have been around 17, 18. And uh, the cathedral was packed. So the priest comes over, he gets in the hall, and starts talking. And then he said, well, uh, the main topic conversation or, or, or discussion rather would be married couples, you see. And I know that it, it can lead to a very exciting life or whatever. And so he, so he said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call on people, on all of you people here, that if you at any time had any misunderstandings with your wife or no misunderstandings, whatever, nothing at all like Please stand up. So a few people, a few men stood up and said they, 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 they never had any quarrel with their wife. They never argued or anything. So they said, look, there's quite a few people. You're wonderful. What wonderful people they are. Because they're the biggest liars that I have. <laughs> 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 because he said, even, even because, he said, even when you're drinking a cup of coffee and you move the cup and the wife might ask the husband, did you move my cup? And said, no, you sure did. I had it over on this side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for letting us come today. And, and uh, it was wonderful. It was really wonderful, very helpful. And um, I think that you really captured the essence of what a wonderful program it was. And, and, and how meaningful it was to a lot of people. Um, so, and it certainly brought you a lot in your family. Yeah. All of the things that you're now doing grew out of, but it grew out of your being willing to be versatile and try all those things that God gave you to work with. You see, my family used to own the, uh, all that property by Crystal Ray Church. Wow. My grandfather is buried there. So uh, I came from a family where we raised a lot of sheep, a lot of goats, and a lot of vegetables and everything else. So I, uh, we were accustomed to having, except money, see. Money was hard to come by. And by little milk we sold, or vegetables we sold a lot of food. But you see, the idea was that uh, you, there was a challenge outside of taking care of the goats to see what's going on there, and I got to point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for letting us come, and uh, we will uh, 